Sorry, it's DJ. Hey. spend their days passively searching for something interesting to do. Others dig in and find it. While nothing is certain, anything is possible. And the anticipation leads you into action. Because it's here that adventures begin. Stories are unearthed, secrets are revealed, fortunes are found, mysteries are solved, and the past is brought to life. Nothing valued is ever lost. It's simply waiting to be discovered. So here's the question. What are you looking for?
It's Thursday, it's eight o'clock, and it's the big detecting show. Hello, dear. Hello, dear. How are you? Are you all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You? <sighs> yeah. 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 Not too bad. You got, Thank a bit you. Of, you got some white on your face. Oh, don't start. Um, <clears throat> I've been painting at home. So, uh, and uh, I, I went to the brewery tonight, Chumpsford Brewery. Very good beer there, Chumpsford Brewery. Look at that. Who wouldn't buy that? And um, hey, I'd buy Northern beer. This is better. And I had all paint over my face, but my son didn't tell me. So, I, oh, I don't know. Anyway, tonight I'm excited because we've got a cracking show tonight. We've got Mr. Gary Cook. We've got my wall, Adrian's wall. And we're going to talk about metal detecting. Tonight's Adrian's Wall has only just been created because you forgot. Yeah. And it, I think it's my favourite one ever. And I think, I think we should give something away, whoever finds and, this one. And you'd never even heard of it until I'd mentioned it. No, no. So that's no, the I first haven't. time ever I've, I've, I've. Well, I had sort of heard of it but can't go I'd back love, now can't put back no. on your word now i'd love to, i'd love to find one put it that way so uh really good on uh my wall tonight so did you go out detecting no no i um i'm in the process uh you know my van got wrote off and i had to uh, oh yeah it. so i basically took it apart because I wasn't happy with it and started again internally. Uh, and I'm well happy. In fact, I'm happier now than I was with the original van, how it's, how it's um, all set out. Me and the boy, Old Croft, are going to do the uh, electrics this weekend. And I've come up with a fantastic idea for the internal decoration as well. So I'm quite happy with that. Mm. No, I didn't a... take my van through a hedge backwards. It was outside my house the evening before the Rodney Cook Memorial last year. And a um, council tipper took off the back panel, let's say. Yeah. You, so you can have a there with duct plinth, tape. plinth for your manticore in there. Do you know, I've come up with a really, really good idea. It's not a plinth per se. LED. Is. I've got this really, really bourgeois idea for it dave i haven't asked you how are you getting on with the manticore because you're a person who worries about technical issues on a metal detector right okay i i i haven't sent you my settings but i sent you someone who uses similar you probably <laughs> haven't put them in have no you? no i did i did i did but how did so so in essence, I am loving it. Uh, it's finding things that are so small that I don't think I would have found previously. Or I may have done. I'm just going over them. Old adage. It's... I'm, I'm not taking as much notice as I maybe should be with that 2D imaging system. I'm basically using it as an equinox. So... In that respect, it's bang on because I'd, I'd learnt the Equinox to a degree. The yeah. settings that you sent me, I like. I put in, however, probably the worst uh, site I could have ever put them settings into because it was littered with green waste and it was just annoying me to the point I was going to hang mm. someone. Yeah, it will pick everything up but it will pick out tiny silver, gold. It, it just got to listen. And those settings are like a two-tone as yeah. opposed to multi Okay, let me put it in the sense. It might be better me saying that I may have, should have um, used them on a quiet, a quiet site, a very quiet site with nothing in the field at all, perhaps first, so I could get yeah. used to the, yeah. the blips yeah. and the blops because you, the way that you'd sent it me was a totally different um, noise, uh, what they called, 
uh, tones than I, I'd normally prefer. Yeah. So I haven't sat well, tone and it was a yeah. bit, and I couldn't get my head around it. Similar to the Equinox tones, to be honest, two tone that was, but yeah. you can change it. Well, but I, use five, I just, use five tones normally, so. But just goes to show you're getting on with it and you're a little, you think you're a technophobe, but I don't think you are, but you're getting on with the Manti course. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I am surprisingly so. And, and I, I will, it's a machine that I don't ever want to get rid of because, uh, why should I? Yeah. It, it's currently well, a Ferrari <clears throat> for a, I'm doing a Yui. I'm doing a, a, a you adage. Yeah, here, here we go. It's a, a Ferrari Countach, Countach, Countach. for a Lamborghini, um, a, a, a Austin Allegro driver. Ferrari, <laughs> did Countach. that work? Yeah. Um, okay. Should we say hello? I don't to know cars. That's why I did it. Yeah, say hello to people like you do that. Uh, Our guest is near at the moment. I've sent in the uh, the link Nick late West, because I was late. Steve and Brain, Andrew T from Canada. Thank you, Andrew. A bit quiet in the chat tonight. Uh, Charlie Dreamer, Philip Wills, of course, um, and Steve Dunn and Anthony Fleece, um, Steve Cord. I think he's getting an Indian takeaway. And hello, Ange. Good evening. Um, Anthony Fleece. He's had some fines of consequence of late. He's had, some, he's had lots of bronze things, and he's also had the bronze things recast for him in modern equivalency. Oh, very and nice. And look absolutely bob on. Uh, Donna Martin uh, thought I was going to miss tonight. I'll mainly be listening. That's all right, Donna. I hope you're well. Uh, Nicholas Berry, the man who does the jumble sale at Rodney Cook. Hello, Nick. Um and james barnes hi mate uh Ange, uh hello derek sherwin gareth howard james barnes i haven't responded i've saw your message but i've not got to it yet because i've been a bit flustered sorry uh, today i was painting the house and i thought of people and things and detecting show and i was in the toilet and i thought of gareth like you do Whoa, 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 we didn't want to go any further here. Yeah, no, no, not what happened in 1997, but I miss Gareth's loft, so I think we should have Gareth's toilet. Okay. Oh, Who, Gareth's who's toilet. on the toilet? Who's, who's on, on Gareth's the toilet? toilet? Yeah. You'll have, to, you'll have to create a new uh, video for that before we can play it. Yeah, so I thought it's all kicking off now in the chat. So, um, uh, uh, Christine Lazel. Oh, that's what someone you several months. Yeah. Christine Lazel. Um, Hello, Christine. Thank Hello, you Christine. Nice to see Hello. you. Do you metal detect Christine or do you just like the look of me or Dave? Um, <clears throat> Stephen Brain, um, I haven't forwarded it to Donna. Sorry, I apologise. I'll write it down. Adrian, talk amongst yourselves. Um, Where's the pen? I, I, I'm just wondering whether I should do a prize tonight for Christine Lazel. <laughs> um, for Hadrian's Wall, Adrian's Wall. Those who aren't watching, no, those who haven't watched before in the show, we have uh, an Adrian's Wall, which is like Hadrian's Wall, and there's a metal detecting find, and you've got to guess what it is. And tonight is one of my favourite ones because I don't think anyone will get it. Well, Philip probably Williams will tonight. because I know quite a few people who've had them up before. It's just you who's never heard of them. No, but then look at me and fibulas. Gold status, quarter status, nobles. Yeah, find it all. Bloody fibula. No. Matt can't right say mine and your, your, mine and your Luke's. Uh, mm. There's something I wanted to mention. Let me just go through the people <laughs> because it will remind me what I wanted to say. Yes, no, I did watch the Frank me. Spencer episode, Nick Berry. And <laughs> I, I think I watched it twice in bed thursday night after the show and i forgot how slapstick frank spencer was and there needs to be more of that on television today it certainly does yeah uh, anybody who went to last weekend's valley searches rally uh how did it go honestly i've not seen a thing that's 
not saying there's nothing there. I just have not used uh, Facebook to what I usually use. I've, I've just been a bit manic. Uh, if you, you you didn't ask uh, ask you, did you go detect in the weekend? Yep, uh, went out Saturday uh, with the. Uh, um, really interesting, actually. Went on um, one of the fields on our permissions, which has got a lot of springs on it, so it's wet. It's got wet patches. Like about four years ago, I've got stuck in sinking mud or sinking sand, whatever it is, and I was waving at my mate James, and he just waved back. It didn't help me, and I lost a welly. Went down about four foot, but found a papabula. Uh, nice. I've never, I've never had one of them. No, it, lovely and uh, trade lead trade token. But this weekend went out. Oh, what did we find? Um, not a lot. Um, I've, I've just put you friend in a timeout anyway. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, he started laughing at the fibula thing, so I just he, he found a hammer. I did, but yeah, I, no, it's it's. It, it's really weird at the moment because the soil on my, one of my permissions about three inches is really wet and then it's dry and it's the multi-frequency i was on the manticore with my settings and um i was picking up stuff crotal bells and things like that but nothing of consequence oh uh i did get i got a bit of a plane i think which i was quite excited about a bit of an aluminium part of the plane which could have been second world war that's what i wanted to say you reminded me when you said manticore uh, oh. matt kent said that anthony police police uh he's using a manticore on beach settings on the cultivated yes 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 um a lot of people do that and do with the uh, equinox as well never heard um, of that one yeah I've, yeah i've yeah. left it in by mistake when i've been the beach not metal detected for a while yeah did you see on the news, BBC News last night, the hobby in a good light? I don't watch it. a nine or ten year old uh, chap called Brody. Yes. Put it oh on yes, me. we discussed it, didn't we? Yeah, <laughs> yes. We think his parents <laughs> were fans of Jaws films. <laughs> yeah, Brody. Brody. He found a uh, a medieval uh, seal on a yeah, big nice. in Gloucestershire. Did you see the video and did you see the person, the male person who was walking around with him? I was no. convinced it was Gary Cook. <laughs> how old how old's the boy? Sadly, sadly, I don't think Gary has sired any other children that Lisa knows of anyway. Oh, Good no. evening, Gary. Good hey. evening, John. It wasn't me. Hey, that's yeah. for certain. <laughs> get me in trouble. Uh, there they how are. How are you both? Yeah, we're good, thank you. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. How are you two? Brilliant. Uh, John's oh, wigs looking well. Yeah. Nice, nicely yeah. furnished. I wish yeah. I had as much. He's washed, as that. What is what is that? His monthly bath just for tonight. <laughs> He's had the vosey now, hasn't he? <laughs> he hasn't got an RCM top on though. Not have I. No, we have to we have to, to sort that out, Dave. We have to. I've got an RC, I've got an RCM top. I've got an RCM hat. Unfortunately. As I said, I was um, a bit behind the times tonight. I was. Uh, oh. John, does that say solar, Armani solar powered instant? Yes. I, I, I brought it back from him from a market in Turkey about two no, years. I'll just... <laughs> tell you what, John, I'll bring you one back from a market in Turkey in about two months. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Obviously, it'll be a medium, won't it? Yeah. I'll have, yeah. It in, I'll have it here in time for the RCM. All right, an extra large medium. <laughs> the amount of stress that we've been going through, he's going to lose a lot of weight. <laughs> I think it says Amani beans. Beans, no beans. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. So how have you well, been? We, we, we're groovy. We just plod along, don't we, Adrian? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get and. Uh, I haven't, I haven't spoken to you for a while, Gary, but no. it all's good. Um, no, will, uh, what, this afternoon, at least? I will be talking to you because we're going to make, we've got a, an exclusive announcement to make tonight as well. Ooh, not even when I know this one. Gary's coming out. Not even, John. even Adrian doesn't but, know this one. Exactly. 
He's the actually only, holding hands there. The only fan, yeah. the only fan oh, now he puts his hand behind his head. John's <laughs> not got trousers on. He's sitting yeah. in his pants. We only, um, <laughs> we, uh, we only found out about an hour ago. So, um, so it is, it is a massive exclusive. Um, so we've only literally just put it up onto the Marshall's uh, WhatsApp group page. So, um, so, so yeah, we're so going to obviously hear this before any marshals because no one goes on there. Well, the, oh. we, the mar we don't want the organisers to, to tell us our phone. How come it was? How come you told the big detecting show before you told us? So because we're... it's the big detecting <laughs> show. Exactly. So friends of the show and all that. But no, we're gonna. We've got something to announce. It's, there's still a few, couple of little eyes and a few T's to to do. Do you want to do it now or do you want to wait until later on? Well, it's 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 up, it's up to the to people, guys. isn't it? It's down to the people, not me and Aid. It's up to you guys. It's we up can... to you. Well, <laughs> basically, we have been. Ha Adrian will back me up on this. We have had non-stop hanging from people asking, "When's the no frills going to be announced? When's the no frills going to be announced?" Well, it's being announced now. <laughs> oh, the RCM No Frills Weekender is returning. We've been given the go ahead. We're going to go back to last year's site of the No Frills, where we had the Gold Staters, the Saxons, the Gold Posy Ring, the Norman Pennies, and countless Roman fibulas, eh? Um, <laughs> and Roman <laughs> brooches. And, uh, but we've, we've also got um, some new fields, which we didn't have access to last year. So we will have some new fields for it as well. And hopefully we'll be able to have the barbecue again. We're not too sure yet because the farm shop next door is now closed that we had last year. Oh. Yeah, Dan. Um, but he did say. I was coming all, for the cakes. All of his barbecue equipment is still there. So um, he might still be able to do us the, the, bar, the, the barbecue. But we will be looking at probably the end of september so it will either be friday the 27th of september or friday the 4th of, of october we're not october's too sure is better no no no, no. Is september's better no, I'm, 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 on, I'm off work i'm on holiday the end of september so yeah, sorry, you're, you're the weekend before <laughs> you just let us know what's easier because you didn't come to the no frills last year eh? did you no no and you miss the well. like so many people say there's unfinished business there and um we hardly touched the fields and we had how many was it four or five gold staters last year off that yeah side. and we had some nice romans as well some nice denarii uh denari off there and um yeah i shan't forget the guy with the gold posy ring because he'd only done about 30 hours detecting before uh yeah it was his first yeah it's literally he, yeah he his first machine was a manticore and then uh and uh, he was struggling to get to grips with it when he first came there. He kept digging up bits of iron. And then uh, literally by the end, he came back and said, oh, I've got this. <laughs> and put his hand out. And uh, it's like, wow, thanks a lot. It was a gold posing <laughs> ring, wasn't it? Yeah, I cool. particularly enjoyed the fact that every single person who came to the No Frills weekend had the fibula. I thought that was phenomenal yeah. going. <laughs> <laughs> well, people were sharing them around because they said, you know, do you want these? Because I've got so many of them. So I am. <laughs> Well, we knew it was no. going to be a reasonably good weekend when we opened up the camping field for detecting on the Friday, and literally within ten minutes, we'd had four denarii and a and a um, William the Conqueror penny, wouldn't it? Yeah, and I think it was a skeet as well. And a like. skeet, yeah, literally in the first fifteen minutes of opening up the Friday field, so we knew it was going to be a good one. Well, Kevin Welsh um, says there's in the chat there's more status in field eleven from the No Frills. 2023 weekender yeah he um, had one of them kev he had a gold stater on that from that field and hardly anybody was in there that was a rose gold one it was beautiful yeah, beautiful yeah. stater that yeah, was. Yeah. you um, see my daughter's just commented there um gary alex mckay hi there father that's not not you not another one of yours <laughs> <laughs> they're all coming out the woodwork now aren't they? <laughs> Uh, her partner is actually making his metal detecting um what's the word debut he's not been seen not even held a metal detector and he's joining me at the rcm this year as my oh, my stall helper 
And, yeah. Really? Uh, it's his first time doing oh, anything oh, metal detecting related and he's coming the RCM. Does he realise that his main job is to just keep bringing in pieces of cake from the cake stand? Yeah, she would have told him that. Yeah. And, and, and he also realises that what happens at the RCM stays at the RCM. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Gary, um, this year there's going to be a comedian, isn't there? Yes. Um, do you want... I was going to... I can announce no. the head or do you want me to just keep it quiet? We'll keep it quiet. We'll, we'll, like, we'll, we'll re reveal it, like, nearer yeah. the time, I think. But... Even He's Dave, even, I'm sure even Dave Sadler will, will appreciate this comedian. Gary, I would have probably appreciated last year's, but I wasn't well. No. <laughs> I was and drinking was coffee really by my tent. Yeah. Um, but we've got a good, we've got a, yeah, we've got a good headliner this year. And If it's Joe Lysett, I won't be happy and I'll be sticking a spade in his head. <laughs> I like but, Joe Lysett. Well, you're obviously a wrong one for down south, aren't you? No, <laughs> oh, I like him. I think he's quite funny. For a... The Indians are coming back, um, and there will be three of them, and the compare is normal. And the headline is very good, <laughs> Lee Mack. Yeah, I wish. Oh, dear. Uh, but we've also got a medieval... What's the date of this medieval group? Um, they specialise in the War of the Roses, so they will be doing mock Civil War, War of the Roses. Then, is it? Um, they are, yeah, it was the, yeah, the red and the white rose. Was it the Lancast Lancastrian and another house, wasn't it, fighting? Um, <clears throat> but this, yeah, this is a big medieval reenactment group, Michael Barrymore. <laughs> No, Michael Barrymore unveiling a new underwater machine. Go ahead. <laughs> Roy, Roy uh, Grubby Brown. Yeah. Peter Cave's doing it because they keep getting cancelled at the new co-op arena. But, um, yeah, so we got all to get that one. We got a big medieval reenact medieval reenactment group coming, and they're going to be a bit like the Roman one. They're going to set up an, an authentic medieval village camp, whatever. You're going to have medieval knights doing mock fights and battles throughout the weekend um the Ro i think the roman group were fantastic last year weren't they and um they were quite quite good fun as well very eccentric the uh, the leader um but i think we, you know it was a good success last year so we've just we've got this medieval group coming and um they're going to take over quite a large area yeah we've got a massive camping field this year massive and uh, it's flat as a pancake. Yeah, I think it's about 30, 35 acres of camping field, so it's, it's nice and big. Um, what we're going to try and do is um, we've, we've had several suggestions and we've talked about within the group about doing something like, so we want to be very organised with the parking because there's a lot of people actually camping this year, a lot more than years before. Um, so we want to put people in very organised groups. So... Um, we're very determined to have a ladies only area and disabled area with their own toilets. Um, we're also, um, if people want to have their own group, say like um, um, size group, let's uh, let's go dig in that. If they want to have their own area, then we will make an area for them prior to it. So and they, but they've got to give us numbers and stuff like that. The Oval Club are probably going to have their own area as well. So stop wishing. Yeah, stop wishing it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Um, if people want to be in their groups, they've got to come in. They either register to go in their group, or they they come in. So if you if you turn up at the rally and you're in a you want to be in a group of six, um, you have to hold in the holding field beforehand and come in together into the parking area because we're not leaving gaps and spaces. We want to be very organised this year because last year we um, uh, we filled the field up and there was too many spaces and gaps in it basically, and it was on a slope and there were some complications and that. We want to be um, we're, we're trying to firm up that and make it a bit um, a bit more organised than we did last year. So it's one of those things that we're addressing. Obviously, um, we want everybody to be comfortable and safe and um, and organised and in rows and stuff like that. So mm. uh, um, that'll be that, that's a bit of a change. Um, we've got the same sorts of things going on as last year. Obviously, shower block, um, toilets. Um, we're obviously having most of the other stuff that we need. Um, so yeah, I want to. There's something I need to ask Adrian as well. Mm -hmm. John, 
I'm married. Hold that picture. <laughs> picture? The, the, tray, the video screen. Oh. Where did you put it? Um, John, we came up with an idea, Adrian. We don't know how you're going to think. What you you're 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 our tech man. We are having we're look we're, we're looking at hiring this trailer screen. So it's a lorry with a huge, great big TV screen, big big screen on it. Is it a, pro a, a projector screen or a, what the hell's that? Like the Is mobile that, scoreboard. Oh, that's hmm. an actual LED screen, LCD yeah. screen. Uh, yeah. And what we're thinking of doing is having we the toilets. Oh, broad, yeah, no broadcast. <laughs> broadcast live the raffle, and have videos playing on loops like of fines and and the RUH videos playing on loops. The guy who runs it will be there the whole weekend. And from what we know, is if we give him, like, I don't know. A, a, what do they call it? A memory stick or something with these videos on? He'll be able to yeah. play it through that screen. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, we can do something along those and lines. Also say yeah. that you can do live broadcasts as well and link it up. Yeah, live. So we could do the big detective show live on a Thursday night. Yeah, yeah. It could be live on the big screen exactly. Yeah. So no, that be good. There'll be nobody there, but they'll be able to watch. It. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we could broadcast the raffle because so many people moan about it getting hot in that big marquee. We could literally have the screen up and people can be outside well, the raffle live as well couldn't we the 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 raffle the marquee is rammed and there's people because it's the best raffle in all metal detecting rallies without a doubt i mean there's so many prizes that are given away it's i reckon it's tens of thousands of pounds so um, when you know bragdon's gonna watch it outside yeah um <laughs> But um, I, th I think that's a good idea, Gary. Um, talking of uh, people helping Rodney Cook, did you get my message about the toilets? No. What was that? Oh, Dave, did you message Gary about... No, because you were toilet? messaging Gary. No, I said... Oh, don't worry. Well, uh, we could save a lot of money because... Oh, one of I our just remember you saying... Um, Ollie. I do now. You did. Yes. Sorry, mate. You did. Yeah. Yeah. You said something about someone you knew or something or. or... Well, Ollie, leave who was on the on. show. For, yeah, leave it with us. But anyway, just quickly, Steve Barnett, all I have to do in the chat is put this. All I have to do is win a ticket because a lot of people want to go to the main Rodney Cook mm. Memorial Rally this year. And amazingly, you can win a ticket, can't you? through a certain competition site yeah or did you did lockdown competitions are running a competition believe it or not um and they're doing a rcm featured um draw i suppose you could call it and you win the whole kit that you would need to go on a metal detecting rally i think he's given away at 10 Barbecue, sleeping bag. Um, I don't the whole know, package. The whole event. package. And obviously, we will. He, there's also two pairs of tickets to win as well. So four adult tickets all together and two pairs. But we could also, as you look after us so well, if you, I heard you say earlier on that you wanted to do a competition. Why don't you do a competition with a pair of RCM tickets as well? We'll give you a pair to give away on the show. Do you think? Nice. Do you think? Do you think anyone will want them, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> I think who anybody who does want to win them shouldn't enter if they've already got them. They should leave it for people to have a chance. And I will know if they've <laughs> already got them. I yeah, can tell you a funny story about that. About three weeks ago, me and John went to the Knights Templar um, weekender because they always give their raffle money uh, over to the RCM. They do a big raffle during the weekend and everything that they raise from the raffle goes to the RCM. And we always go up there to support them for that. We run the rally um, with them as well. 
um, and we we look after them for the weekend with helping them run up the raffle for them. And this year we had a pair of tickets, which ended up being two pairs of tickets. And then it ended up being three pairs of tickets. And I'll tell you why it increased to three pairs of tickets from one pair in a minute. But to fu the funny thing is, every time somebody, we gave away a pair of tickets, the person who won it came up to, to me on the mic and he goes, I've already got a ticket. <laughs> and literally every person who won the pair of tickets already had a pair of tickets to the RCM. They'd already bought them. So, yeah. we ended, so in the end, I think Crusade with a spade won a pair. Did they win a pair? No, La Lady Liz, um, she she's not come into the rally. She actually won tickets and she's um, donated. donated them to um, Crusade with a spade. They're, oh, giving, they're, they're actually raffling them off to raise money for us as well, which is great. You know, it's, it's fantastic because everybody's sort of like got their own uh, angle on stuff and everything. I'll yeah. send you a picture in a minute, Dave, because I want you to put it up. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right. Um, yeah. I think um, I think to be honest, Dave, we should raffle them next week okay. and just showcase it a bit okay. because tonight um, we got people in the chat uh, who regulars, but maybe we could get some more people coming um, next week, and it'd be nice to have it. Uh, okay. okay. I, I, I well, listen, I've good. got a few parish announcements. I just sent you a picture, Dave. Roger that. I'll get to it in a second. I've got some parish announcements from the, the chat up to now. Uh, what? No idea what that means. Uh, Crusade with a spade and the Grim Sweepers, as John just said, will be raffling RCM tickets off very soon. All yeah. proceeds to the RCM. Wayne Rowland and Nick Berry are, have made two combined... Uh, I forgot what it's called. Display, display cabinets, display cabinets, yeah, which will be <laughs> raffled off. Nick West has got a fantastic prize, and he sent me a picture of something not dissimilar that will be given away at the RCM. And James Barnes will be bringing along with him some actual geophysics equipment as well, mm -hmm. uh, talking people through that if they so wish. Yeah, I'll be could. one of them, James. I'll definitely be one of them. I'm really looking forward to James. To show him how that works it would be very interesting before um, before gary says anything about um uh, the knights templar um can the original I just, ones or the current ones <laughs> the current ones uh, anthony and his group um we had a great weekend with them um the, the weather was actually i went to, and seen wayne beforehand and dropped into wood <laughs> sorry <laughs> go keith ellis go keith ellis sorry john <laughs> John's no, got please, wood, by the way. Please, John's read, got wood, everyone. please read out Keith Fellis's post. Dave. <laughs> Go on, Dave. Me? Read it. Yeah, read it out. I would like the soil sisters <laughs> shave my nuts with a broken bottle for a ticket. <laughs> and sadly, Monarch Designs won't be there this year. You'll be very missed, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so um, just just to say that the <laughs> oh dear, <laughs> I'll tell you what, the soil sisters. If they did that after four o'clock in the afternoon, you've got to worry because <laughs> they would be <laughs> they'd be all over the shop. You would be more than circumcised, believe you me. Um, <clears throat> um, sorry, just a quick question. Whilst before we go on, um somebody in the chat a lady who's new to the show tonight well, she's not new um I've oh, lost yeah, my that, mouth. Was that was um, the one that i couldn't understand i've read that down um, well done, Adrian. can people who aren't attending can they buy raffle tickets we've had this conversation before and it's very difficult um but maybe maybe i might have a way one of these super plans that's yeah. all i'll say if Adrian can come up with a super plan, then we'll, we might look be able to look into it. I um, think, I think, Matt I Kent think... also asked if he got a method set up for attending, if not attend, for donating, if not attending. Uh, we lockdown did... competitions. Hi, lockdown Nikki. Competitions. Nikki yeah. Foster from the Soil Sisters. Um, I'll just say this lockdown competitions, all the money 
raised from lockdown competitions will go to Rodney Cook Memorial. That's so right. if 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 you want to win a ticket or the tent and all that, or you just want to donate, give it to lockdown competitions because they'll give the money to Rodney Cook. Yeah, mm. yeah. We have got a just giving page that is of that is dormant at the moment, but we can open it up again. Um, if it, but it, it, it can be a bit of a, a nightmare sometimes, it, you know. But um, I've just noticed on the chat, Eagle Eye. Oh, he's getting bummed I, again. Yes, Hold on, yes. let me bun him. I do, oh, I do have on. On. He's, he's gone. Pro prolific, he's awful. Um, Nikki Foster, evening all. Nikki, if you look back in the chat. Um, just get a broken bottle ready. It, it's <laughs> nothing, I, I, it was oh, nothing to do with me. I was made to read it out by <laughs> Gary and John. Oh, um, just look back in the chat, Nikki. Uh, hope you're well, Nikki. Um, but <laughs> I, I think that would make a good video for the show, actually. Oh, now that, I that just, photo there, this is what I wanted to, to talk Nikki, about. Nikki, I'm just going to repeat it. Somebody, a very naughty and rude gentleman called Keith Ellis, said. I would let the soil sisters shave my nuts with a broken bottle for a ticket. <laughs> Nothing to do with me. I've just read it out. Sorry. <laughs> if it offends, very sorry. Oh, dear. It's so, it's so cool. Something wrong now, isn't it? Dave, I've just got to make a toilet break. Sorry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's all them bloody... Are you, you're still with us, obviously, aren't you? Yeah, I am. I'll make sure I'm disconnected when I'm... No, 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 no. Leave it on. <laughs> well, it might, it might still connect. It's all them pots. Oh, you wee. You wee all the connect with the microphone. I'm still here. Are you in the garden? Yeah. <laughs> I can hear the wind. You're having a wee in the garden. I'm in the neighbour's front drive. No, he's got an... He's it's got Tony an... Tony Kaywood there. He lives in one of them houses. He hasn't got an indoor toilet. It's outside. Leave me alone, Tony. <laughs> Oh, I can hear it dribbling. <laughs> hey, <Beth. laughs> hey, 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 hey. Aren't you out in the brewery, that is? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Nikki Sorry, Foster said she could offer him to shave them for him for extra donations to the charity. With a shave, oh, with a broken bottle. That's got to be worth 50p. <laughs> <laughs> Raise some money for bottle shaving on OnlyFans, Nikki. <laughs> Adrian, how long are we? Are you having you like Tom Hanks in that bloody women's oh, baseball might, film? I might need a number two. Hang on. Be disabled ten in the grid. Yes, no, I'm back. Steve, oh, okay. Stephen Brain, um, quest for Britannia. Yes, there will be a disabled tent area, Stephen. Yes, just washing there my hands. A disabled area for what, you. You're washing them in your urine. White spirit. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, Dave, that photo that you had up a minute ago, and I'll put off again. I, 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 I'll explain what that is. It's a photo. Oh, it's better. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So when we went to Knight Templar, um, and we were doing the raffle for them. Um, it started off with a pair of tickets, to play, and I noticed, I noticed a couple in the front row. Every time we talked about the RCM, they got very quite emotional. And every time a ticket came up for the RCM raffle, they both got exceptionally excited. Um, and every time it went to somebody else, they got very upset. This couple. I'm so, not laughing at this story, I promise. I I um I picked up on the fact that this couple were getting quite emotional during the, the raffle. Um so I guessed that they were trying to win an RCM ticket, <laughs> a pair of RCM tickets. So I Chandra, it? <laughs> I um I kept adding tickets to the raffle for this to hopefully get this couple to win a pair. And they didn't. So at the end of the raffle, I could see how upset they were. So I pulled them up and I said to them, look, I've picked up on the fact that you two are quite emotional about, about winning, about getting a pair of tickets. And they explained that he, the chap, Jamie, 
he um, is <clears throat> battling cancer. And he's had quite an aggressive form of cancer. And he'd recently lost his dad to cancer. And the RCM, he, he, he said it's been his dream for two years because of my story with my dad and, and lots of other people and because of what we do for cancer and the money that we raise for cancer. He has been trying for two years and for two years he just couldn't get a ticket they missed out you know how fast they sell and he was trying desperately to win and I, I i added three more pairs of tickets to the raffle to hope but they just didn't their, their number wasn't called out so i made a quick decision while they were on up at the top you know, in, in with me at the front and i said right well you are going to the rcm you're going as my personal guest you're going to be looked after for the weekend you're going to be you're going to have it. You're not going to want anything. And literally, he just burst into tears, crying his eyes out. His wife was crying. And then he started telling me the story about his dad dying of cancer. He's fighting cancer. And it was his ambition to come to the RCM to support to support it. And um, there, we all, everyone was just crying their eyes out, weren't they? Yeah. It was such an emotional moment. And that photo was taken just afterwards. And he, the whole evening he just kept coming up to me and putting his arm around me crying his eyes out and i can't believe i'm going i can't believe i'm going to the rcm and i i, I just could not go let them go away without giving him a pair of tickets it's the least well, I gary gary um nikki foster she yeah. said that was so lovely to see they were so over the moon she was still in tears over it on sunday uh, yeah. David Evans, big luck, big love, big luck, big love, Gary. Um, and there's, all, there's also a message there yeah. for Keith Ellis from uh, where's it gone? No problems uh, with donations, just having trouble with travel insurance. So that Kevin Welsh, great... uh, um, Keith Ellis, Kevin Walsh says, if you let the soil sisters use deep heat as the shaving queen, you can have his ticket. <laughs> I tell you what, we we could make a bit of money for Rodney Cook out of this with Keith Ellis. We know Keith very uh, well. Nikki's going to have friend requests from Keith. She's going to have to friend request Keith Ellis now. I think I think we could have an over 18s uh, uh, Rodney Cook fundraiser on this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Keith can I butt little... in? Can I can I butt in on the back of this charity malarkey while I'm here? Oh, sorry, sponsored walk. As you can see, I'm not built for walking, but this weekend I'm doing a sponsored walk. Well, it's me and, and the boy, Mason. Uh, for those of you who know the football world, you may have heard of Alu Makari, who used to be the manager of Manchester United. No, sorry, used to play for Manchester United in Scotland to be the manager of Stoke City and West Ham United. And so, Swindon Town. And, and Swindon Sw Town. And Swindon. Now, uh, he went for a drive out about five or six years ago around the area where he lives. Uh, he lives in Stoke on Trentsdale. And he was shocked to see the amount of people who uh, were destitute living on the streets uh, from your, your people with obviously conditions, medical conditions, um, people who take drugs to your. Um, veterans and such like so we decided to set up a foundation called the, the lou macari center uh which raises money for and and helps people that are homeless so on saturday uh i'm a union rep as you know we're going to be doing a sponsored walk this isn't to sponsor me this is to sponsor mason my 10 year old sorry 11 year old give him a year uh we, we're going to be doing a sponsored walk from gmb and anley to the Lou Macari Centre and back again. Now, there's no pay, there, there's no just giving or anything like that because it's basically sponsor forms that we're doing. So, if anybody would like to donate to to Mason, and already Carl Ellis, uh, a viewer of the show, has, has sent me some money over. Um, the only way I can do it is at the link at the bottom of the screen, the PayPal to Sadler underscore Dave at Yahoo.co.uk. Well, the ICM will donate a hundred quid to you, mate. Oh. Gobsmacking. Thank you very much, Gary. Appreciate that. 
I'm John and the RCM. Very much do appreciate that. John, do you know, do that. What you make? Yeah. How many miles is it, Dave? Two? I'm not. I, I don't know. It's about. Uh, it, it's over five miles anyway that we're going to be doing. But as you can see, I'm I'm not made for walking that far. I can meander around. I can. Sorry to use Adrian's terminology. I can minutes Means. around the field. <laughs> <laughs> I keep stopping and leaning and kneeling, but when it comes to walking, I'm I'm not in the best of physical conditions to do such a thing as this. So, but Come I on, wasn't you... not going to be doing it anyway. We'll, tell you what, we'll, change it. we'll change it. We'll give you an incentive. We'll give you fifty quid a mile if it's five miles max. We'll do you fifty quid a mile. Thank you. If you do the fifty, if you do the five miles, we'll give you fifty quid a month. I can guarantee I'm going to be doing the full amount, and I'll be streaming right, a we'll lot of it live on the. It, it's, it's the GMB uh, Midlands like Manufacturing. Course. So if you want yeah, to I... see what's going on, and you look for the GMB Midlands Manufacturing. That's one of the um, things I represent. It's basically bringing manufacturing back wow. to the area, <laughs> and it'll be streamed live throughout. I've been told. Like, I'm not allowed to wear fancy dress. If you walk it naked, Matt can. <laughs> I can't walk it naked. I've been told I have to wear me me logos, and but I'm gonna get away with it by wearing a certain item of clothing beneath my logoed. Attire. Well, I think you should be wearing a Rodney Cook hoodie or top. Um, Basically, based on uh, yeah, put, I've got my hat. I'll put my hat on. Make the boy wear hat as well. Yeah. yeah, just we'll quickly. Quit a mile then um, for you. All right. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate that. Something that I missed in the chat, James Wynn, uh, lovely guy, been on the show a lot. He, Him and Nick Berry are donating a lot of good prizes to this year's Rodney Cook Memorial. Handmade wooden stuff. Uh, so and, I just thought I'd... And Wayne. And Wayne Rowlands as well. Is the cousin. Yeah, Wayne. Jane, yeah, but they, they're collaborated and making some amazing things mm. for this year's rodney cook mm. raffle both i just very, thought a very talented gentleman indeed just wait until yeah. you see the cabinet from wayne and then the decor for the cabinet by by nick it's gonna blow your mind it's it absolutely stunning it's gonna look fantastic it really is um, what, you, what you've got to remember as well with this is, is there. These... John's got wood, by the way. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> that's not sort of information when he's got no again, pants on. Again. Yeah, that's why you went up to Wayne. He took it. He wood. No, I went and seen wood. Wayne and give. Wait, he's got wood on the brain. What? Armani B. You went and give Armani Wayne wood. Wood. <laughs> wood. Okay. Yeah. John gave Wayne wood. Yes. Uh, um, what you've got to remember with that is, is these are one-off pieces that are never going to be made again, obviously. Um, and there are we're special... talking about the cabinets now, aren't we? Cabinets, yes. Right. Yes. Sorry, I thought we were talking about wood again. <laughs> yeah. Pieces. So um, we're not sure whether they're going to be raffled or auctioned or quite how we're going to do it yet. But um, we don't want them just to be put in as just a standard raffle prize. We want to do something quite special with them. So, um, it, yeah, because they are nice, nice pieces. So, yeah. Um, and it's you know they 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 work really hard on it. We don't them. we don't actually know the the, the full details. We of don't really know what it's going to look no. like. We just know what the no. rough idea is, don't we? Left, so. it, left it to them to sort it out and sort it out between them. But they're you know they're, uh, if you see what Wayne makes, his lovely lovely cabinets he makes. So. And we all know you know how talented both of them are. You know what, uh, and James as well. And James boxes and that. He, yeah, he made the uh, the wine thing, didn't he, for your Adrian with the logo on yep. the big detective show yep. right? logo yeah yeah exactly. so it's you know but again all the proceeds going to go to the rcm um we we don't know whether we're going to raffle it or whether we're going to auction it or whether we're going to do it yet we'll wait yeah. and see what happens yeah. um we're working out near the time you know but it will go into the pot for this year's fundraising and um you know that's why we wanted to make the announcement about the no frills which will be coming up as well as far as the one day is concerned, me and John are going out next week to assess some sites for a one day as well. So we will have the one day and we will have no frills this year. We we apologise that we're a bit behind with it, but the weather hasn't helped the farmers and we've just been, you know, inundated with trying to get everything ready for the for the main weekend as well, haven't we? So yeah. 
Plus, we've had a, some very important visits in the last month. Yes, that, that's the whole reason Gary came on the show with John to talk about where has all this money gone? Mm. And David, have you got some pictures? I think Dave should have some. You should have some from the website. So uh, I, just sent Dave, I just sent Dave a few pictures um, oh, on Messenger. Those who aren't on Facebook, um, if you go to rodneycookmemorial.co.uk and click on news, you will see where the money from this fantastic hobby is going for Rodney Cook. And I think it's amazing what Gary yeah. and his team have achieved. Um, we, we all donate to charity, whether it's air ambulance, cancer, um, whatever, homeless. But Rodney Cook, a little charity, which you are, Gary, not being rude. We're, you're big in the metal detecting community, oh, but yeah, in the grand scheme of things. 100%. But, but look at what, this is where your money is going. So you go detecting, have a few drinks, a laugh, comedian, but you're actually paying for this. Sorry, Dave, go ahead. I'm sending you some more, Dave, that you might want to put up. <clears throat> so I, I think, you know, we, we, we've explained it before in the past that, you know, the, the Dyson... Uh, Where'd you go with it now? Oh, right. Right. He, he keeps sending me stuff and they're all over the place now. I'll start there, um, is that all right? The, the one before was obviously, we'll talk about that. Me and John will bring that up um, for you, the, the plaque. Um, basically, when we first started the RCM, we were raising money for um, a charity based at the RUH Hospital, which is the Royal United Hospital in Bath. And that was where my father was treated mainly for his cancer and it was where he died he died in the um the, the william budd ward which was the cancer center cancer ward at bath royal united hospital it's where he died um everybody knows the story who knows the rcn they've heard me talk about it many many times um when the dust settled as it were it ne it's the wrong word, really. The dust never settles. You never get over it. Adrian will know this. You never get over it. It never leaves you. The pain is like a knife in your heart the entire, for the rest of your life. And you learn to deal with the pain. You learn to live with it. It never goes away. And losing dad, as I've always said, was probably the worst pain I've ever endured in my entire life. So that was what the art the RCM was about. It was to raise money to help the incredible people, not only the staff at the RUH and the cancer centers all over the country, the amazing people who work in these wards to help families and not just the people who suffer with cancer, it's the families who suffer with them. The ones who have to deal with, 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 with watching their loved ones slowly decimate into nothing and pass away from being fit incredible people to look to virtually nothing and that is what the ruhx is it's a cancer charity run at the ruh to help they were building this state-of-the-art new cancer center because the, the cancer center for the southwest which is which was it based at the ruh mainly was just it wasn't fit for purpose almost it was too many people were getting cancer to, to deal and it, so they, they they were creating this incredible center that we were told was going to be welcoming for people. It was going to be therapeutic for people. It was going to allow families to stay on site, to be with, with their loved ones whilst they're having treatment. The whole decor of the place and everything about it was going to be set for helping people and, 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 and for the treatment of people. And over the last few years that's what we've been we've seen we've 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 watched the center slowly go from the from the ground upwards we visited it first when it was just the footings and it's now this incredible building i don't know if you've got a photo of the actual outside um 
I'll send one to you. It's, it's an incredible building now, and it's the Dyson Cancer Centre. And we would give it a private tour, weren't we, yeah. John? Yeah, so some of, some of the people from our group... Um, that's me uh, and mum. Yeah, that's Gary and his mum. Um, oh, we, Gary. Been crying there. Yeah, well, just pretty oh. soon, before John says a bit more, what you've got to remember is, although the building was taken down, the name of the council ward is the William Budd Ward, which is still there. Although it isn't the actual physical board, the ward, sorry, that that, um, that my dad was in, it's it's in the same location. And what you've got to remember from my mum is that was the very first time since 2017 that she's even managed to, to, to step over the threshold of the entrance to the Royal United Hospital. She's not been able to go anywhere near that hospital because it brings back so many evil, horrible memories for her. And it's where my dad died. In our, you know, he died in my arms. He died with his family around him. And mum has never been able to go anywhere near that hospital ever since, even when she's had to have treatment herself for a triple heart bypass since my dad died. And she's had to have treatment. She's refused to go to the Bath Hospital. She's gone to Salisbury. So when we had this, invite to go and have a private tour of the Dyson Centre and to see some of you might know this some of you might not but as part of the fundraising that we've done because we've raised so much money the RUH hospital decided that a treatment room in the new cancer centre was going to be named after my dad it was going to be named after the RCM rally the man that we my dad's name that is that is about the rally the rcm stands for rodney cook memorial so they wanted to forever have my dad's memory and my dad's legacy and for what we've done with the rcm forever in a building a treatment room so there is an actual treatment room that you've got photos of you'll see a picture of me and mum in the room and the rest of us and um, there is a treatment room in that hospital called the rodney cook treatment room one and there it is there and that everybody is where your money's gone mm. people's lives will be saved because of what we've done that room will save people's lives and that is where your bloody money goes and all of the amazing people in this hobby who have helped us do this that is the end result mm. people will be alive today because of what you've done and what we've all done, not just the RCM organizers, not just, not just us, everybody. <laughs> I thought it was, I I thought it was Shrek then. <laughs> That's John. I had the air cuts since then. But I think, I think Gary, um, it, it's, it, it, it's so nice to see where people's money have gone for that. Uh, uh, when we go to Tecton on the Rodney Cook, weekenders we have a good time we enjoy ourselves it's really good value for money and that money you don't pocket it no one else pockets it it goes to this and i yeah. just think that is brilliant and people must remember that everything else is volunteered john all the rcm team and people put themselves out for that whole it was not a weekend because they you get there on what tuesday wednesday set up the marquee set yeah. up the tent toilets oh, yeah the water visors it, it, everything it's and then you don't go on the sunday you go on like the wednesday or tuesday when it's all down so i'd just like to say hats off to everyone who supports it not just paying to go for the weekend but the organizers and the volunteers yeah. because that is such a big thing i mean we all go friday saturday sunday great laugh but there's more to it than that and to get that picture there i think is amazing and your mum must be so proud gary As I so say, proud. it was so difficult for her because she really really wanted to be to, to go and she forced herself to go to go into that hospital, to go into that William Bird ward. And the last time she was in that ward, she walked out, you know, an hour after my dad had just died. 
and she couldn't go back again i i was i have to go back and do all of the you know the death certificates and everything and she's never been able to bring herself to go back there because it's just too painful but she was so determined this time that she was going to do it and she did and we were all so proud of her weren't we yeah, yeah. um because it was so hard and she's crying her eyes out in that photograph but to see dad's name on a plaque on a wall and the thing is long after we've all gone dad's legacy and that ward will still be there and people will still be treated there and, and people might say well who was Rodney Cook why is this room named after him who was the RCM and, and Google it and yeah and 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 that is what we're so proud of everybody as like you said Adrian everyone who's ever done is lit with buying a raffle ticket you know every single person who's bought a raffle ticket or has donated or who's, who's made display boxes who's done any fundraising like the groups you know i'm not gonna name all of the, group, the facebook groups but there's many amazing facebook groups who've raised money you know everyone who's, who's who's put something into the rcm for reasons their own personal reasons their own tragic tragic stories you know anyone who's done anything that that is what it's about that is the end result that is what we do it for and you know we've we, we deal with an awful lot with the rcm we have to deal with an awful lot and we get you know so much positive energy from people you know in, in people like you adrian you know you don't blow enough smoke up your own ass sometimes you know you, 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 <laughs> you know, you yeah, do so much come out, then. for us, you know. You 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 really do, and but it's all of you, you know. You guys for supporting us on the show and and the magazine, Dave, and everything that you do to promote it and push it and help, you know, and get it out there. That is what it's all about, you know. When you look at those photographs and you look at that center, and it's open now. It's, it's yeah. you know there are be there are people. In that hospital then we at this precise moment in there in the wards being treated and there have been people treated in the arse in the rodney cook room now they're being treated on a daily basis in that room for cancer and so for me that is the most the, the proudest moment i could ever I, for all of us yeah to know yeah to give you some idea of the difference that it makes um so um the uh, RUH hospital was uh, awarded for 40 million pounds to build a cancer unit. If you see the old one, you can see it out the windows of the new one. It is was built um, by the Americans um, in the Second World War. As um, I don't know whether it was um, barracks or it was, it was a field it was, hospital. It was a field, was field right? hospital for field people hospital. on D-Day. And it and it literally was, you know, it, it to say it's ramshackle is not the right word because obviously been kept and maintained but it is archaic and it is the rooms are dark and dingy and it's not a very nice place at all. And if you're going to go for cancer treatment, you know, it's, it's not, it, as they make it as welcome as they can, but it is a very old fashioned part of the hospital and it's, it was, it needed updating. So there was, they were awarded the, obviously the grants from the NHS, but the extra 10 million pounds that came from donations, which was ours and the, the Dyson foundation, and everything else made that, whole unit something special so it's been designed um with lots of things in mind like the views out the windows are bigger um the air conditioning is every single room separate has a positive side and a negative side on the ward so that um, there's no infections travel across it for vulnerable people um every single light bulb is um uh, controlled on its own system and stuff like that. I mean, it's, it is really state, state of the art. art. I yeah. mean, in the children's wards, um, they have screens in the ceiling. So <laughs> you've you, got a picture yeah, of Yeah, you can that. connect your iPad to them. I mean, there's a lot of technology that's gone into that building. And what, what you can't see is, is where that money has gone has actually improved what would be a, you know, a, a functional host, uh, uh, or council unit into a very, very special place to be you Fam know, two family rooms yeah. so without the money that we've raised it would like john just said it would just be a standard functioning hospital but there's extra additions to make it special like the ceiling thing for the children's ward you know the, oh. the children can plug their ipads in and, and look at the ceiling and have a tv and what in 
but there's also next door to the children's ward it, a three rooms designed with beds and a kitchen and toilet and showers so if mums and dads want to stay with their children they can and they can stay in the ward and and be there for their children 24 hours a day and not have to leave and and, and upset them they can literally live in that for as long as they need and it was a very emotional day. Yeah, I, I think it's very difficult for us to convey to people that when we went round and had a look with um, the rest of the people in our group and obviously with Gary's mum, it was um, it was very emotional, but it was also um, uh, very inspiring to, you know, we know what's been achieved and it's very difficult for us to explain to everybody that puts into the RCM, you know, um, it was a very proud moment for all of us. I mean, it is something that, you know, everybody that comes along can, you know, pat themselves on the back and say, well, you know, we, we help support that. I mean, it, our hobby is a fantastic hobby, as you know. Um, and we've, this, this whole thing which we've created and, and we we're a part of is um, something special. You know, it, it's, uh, it's very difficult to convey to people how, how grateful we are for obviously the, the rally being such a success. And it wouldn't be like it is I mean, we, it doesn't matter how hard we work behind the scenes and to actually get the day up and running. It's, it's the whole atmosphere of it. It's the, the, the coming together of people that, you know, like um, James and uh, Wayne and Nick and everybody else and the Knights Templar group and all the other groups that do, you know, run their, run their charity stuff. Um, Frank, 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 everybody that does stuff and put in stuff. There's so many people. I, I think really well said, John. Gary and John, just roughly, just roughly, how much has the RCM raised for cancer charity since well, it's been going? Just yeah. roughly. Yeah, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure of the actual figures, but I mean, it's well over 300,000. It's well, right? well, it's more than that, isn't it? Because yeah. with all the other ones we've done, yeah. we're not far away from half a million. Not far away. Um, I think if, if we have a good year this year, we'll probably touch very very close to the half a million mark Brilliant. very very close and can um, i just could I just say it. as well that you know as well as the people who are coming to the point that things might happen where they end up in that yesterday um i was told i was very responsible and i actually the biggest um cancer in the male population in the uk is that of prostate cancer and i actually had a my first ever not the finger up the bum one unfortunately uh big, big, big gutting to be honest but i had the blood test yesterday um which is very responsible yeah, of me, as i'm nearly yeah, 50. so uh I, I, if, yeah, if you get I, the opportunity to have yeah the blood test for that I'm get it done the worst one to to, to to do it you know i'm i'm the worst one for going getting testing and things and you know, there's always an excuse with me. Well, I'm, 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 I'm queuing up. I haven't had, I'm over 50 and I haven't had Yeah, but you only checked. liked it when you had a hand on each shoulder, didn't you? No, because you did mine at oh, Rodney yeah. Cook last year, but you, you said the results were inconclusive. Yeah, and working. I have a, another we, check. We have got a group. We're working on something this year with a group. Um, we don't know if it's going to happen, but we, there are, there are a group of people who come to big events and they offer, they, you can take a swab, um, a saliva swab. And what they really? do, that, yeah, and they go so away. It, this is the one that's going to see how many children you've got. Is that yeah. that swab? Um, no, what they do is they then take away all of those tests and those DNA things and they see if you're a match for people who need oh, bone no. marrow transfers. And then they, uh, and, and way, they, yeah. they're they're a charity, and they do, um, they do Glastonbury, they do big concerts and, and everything yeah. else. And then all they do is they they offer you to you know, can we do you mind if we take a DNA swab off of you? Um, and they explain what it's for. And, and it's if, not the it's not the fuzz. It's not the child maintenance people. No, um, <laughs> it's one in, one in every twenty five thousand people as a bone marrow match um it was the picture you put up of the the lady and the gentleman that actually um gary donated the tickets to for the rally um he'd actually his wife has something to do with it yeah. and what's her name 
I can't remember. I can't remember. remember. Uh, yeah, sorry. No, um, it was Jamie and. Oh. Yeah. Um, so. Um, Tabitha. <laughs> she had a. Um, uh, uh, he had a. Before his cancer was revealed, he, he actually went and uh, gave bone marrow. So, you know, the one thing that is striking to me is, is that we all go around. Uh, I mean, it, and I don't know what the procedure is. I know it's obviously they take a bit of bone marrow, but nowadays with keyhole surgery and that, it, it obviously can't be much. Um, but if you you could actually by by taking a swab and putting yourself on the register. That's it, Anthony Jackie. Thanks, Jackie. Mate. Yeah. I told yeah. you it was Tabitha. <laughs> yeah. So Jackie was talking to us about um, you know what what they do. She goes to these events and does it and said, w would it be possible you know if they could arrange it to come to our rally and do it? And I said, well, yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure everybody would be up for that. I mean, it's you know there's going to be best part of you know well over a thousand people at our rally this year. With everybody, um, you know, it's a thousand more people. Probably fifteen hundred if you added all the. All yeah, the and, and when John said the register, he doesn't mean that register tone, Nick Kaywood. <laughs> Listen, but... I'm going to have to interject here because we've promised, and I'm getting prompted from uh, several people on um, Facebook Messenger uh, that we haven't actually had. <laughs> Uh, oh, he's done it again. <laughs> oh, he's here. He's here. Yeah. He is. Make it big, Adrian. There it is. Is it big? Yeah, it's big. Is it got wood? It's like John's right. right now, it's big. Just to know, no prize monies can be won from this skate. No prizes tonight either. Right. So we and have good one. one. I bet you somebody gets it like in the first one, Adrian. Go John, on, we're going to let you choose the first number tonight. Oh, number 10. Maggie's dead. <coughs> Gary? Wait, I'll, I'll say um, 20. Uh, Nikki Foster, number three. Oh, we haven't got six. Not approach. Lucky number thirteen. Well, it's it's not a bill, though. It's an <laughs> It's not a token. Seb Regden, number five. Seb, thank you for the uh, the donation that you've sent over, and to you too, uh, John Nicholson from. It's not a medal. Not a sundial. Not a denarius from Queen Pod. It's not a fibula. It's not a Celtic key. Uh, so it can't be one of them. It's not a stator. It's not a seal. It's not a button. Number. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Um, Christine Lazel said, my God, the volume went very loud for Adrian's wall. I've got my earbuds in and nearly shot through the roof. <laughs> it's not a piece Sorry. of eight. It's not a military button. It's not a button at all. It's not a pot. Number. Lid. It's not Give a us penny a number. Victoria. 16. It's not a cufflink. It's not marzipan. 14. Now what? Marzipan. Look at the picture. It's not a on the coin. It's not a bird. It's not one of those um, love tokens, is it, from the Roman period? Oh, oh, Gary. What is it, Gary? Get it right. It's not a light. It's not a half You know, when they would hand over a, a token to for favours in a in a in a lady of the oh, right. A brothel token. A Gary brothel. Cook's got it. He certainly has. <laughs> and Adrian had never heard of them. If you look at the picture, something's going on a bit. Wild there. Ah, uh, see, I yeah, I swear, I I could, yeah. I'm not going to say how I knew that. <laughs> it's by some of them children that you've sired. Adrian, made from, tell us about made, it. Made from bronze and smaller than a ten pence piece, the coin depicts a man and a woman engaged in an intimate act. Experts believe it's the first example of its kind to be found in Britain. It lay preserved in mud for almost 2,000 years until it was unearthed by an amateur archaeologist slash 
with a metal detector, metal detectors. On the reverse of the token is a numeral X11111, which historians say could indicate that the holder handed over 14 small Roman coins called asses to buy it. This would have been the equivalent of one day's pay for a labourer in the first century AD. If you want to read more, um, you can find all about it on the show. And that was made um, near Putney Bridge in West London by pastry chef Reg Curtis. Yes. So very interesting there. Uh, I nice really meal. want to find one of them. Uh, Anthony, please. First time I've seen one. Yeah, I've... I've, I've I've heard about them, but I've never found one. I'm but, sure they've had one on the Steve Ford said that's expensive. I'm sure it's like a it, it is a whole day's wages. Well, is it? No, it's probably equivalent of today. Not that I'd know about those sort of things. Um <clears throat> but yeah. Um also the tone, the um the music from said Adrian's Wall can be downloaded to add to your telephone to make it your ringtone if you so desire at the big detecting show.com and we have got a few people who have downloaded it it's, it's, i think it's uh, last time uh, I wayne atwell said yeah. the x111 was the mobile number uh nick yeah, West says he's actually used them yeah. the... <laughs> Not in Wales, brother, Steve Cord. <laughs> Show off, Philip. <clears throat> no, uh, I think... Um, yeah, sorry. I, no, sorry, go on, Gary. You no, know was, all about it. We, we were saying about the, the, the hospital and that, and, um, you know, obviously we will be... Now the hospital is up and running, it doesn't mean that we're not going to continue to raise money because they will be now looking at getting some new equipment and scanners and... Yeah, well, they, they've actually got a space in the um, uh, ward for a new scanner because um, that, so they explained about some very complicated equipment when you go for uh, scans that are in these rooms that are lead lined and stuff like that. And they can't move one of them from the old part to the new part because it's, um, it's, it's for some reason, it's not movable. So they're, they're basically going to put a new, obviously, in, and with equipment. Um, it's upgrading all the time. So they're going to basically put, a, they've already got one scanner in place and they're putting another one in, um, you know, when funds funds are raised. So, you know, we're we're continuing as we obviously do because it's um, it's, it's still needed. It's still going to be needed to, to fund any new equipment that comes up. Um, yeah, so... It all um, depends if my stress levels can, can <laughs> deal with it. And, um, yeah, and I can handle all the stuff, other stuff that goes on. We're trying to organise the RCM, so uh, it's, you can it's, do it, Gary. You can do it. Oh. It's, been, it's been tough this year. I have to admit, it's been very tough this year. Um, and, and talking of tough this year, Gary, uh, you know, it's all it's. Th there's been a lot of malarkey going on in the metal detector community of late, hmm. but behind the scenes, obviously, you've received quite a lot of hate yeah um which is which is what's made it extra tough for me this year um i've received a lot john knows how much nasty i've always absorbed a lot of the nastiness um that i've had to deal with over the years with running the rcn and i've always absorbed most of the nastiness away from my friends because I don't want them to have to deal with the real hardcore stuff that I get. I get sent, and, and I, don't, I, 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 I sometimes wonder whether I should talk about it or not because I don't want. I, this is such a positive thing that we've done, but there are there is a massive negative side to it as well. And I'm not going to. I don't want to glorify these people, but I think I still think that the rest of the metal detecting world should know some of the things that we've had to deal with. You know, I've had people, and, and, and I don't, you know me, I wear my heart on my sleeve and I can take a joke and, and I can have people, take, you know, we, we, we have a lot of laughs between us, but there's a, there's a real line that gets drawn sometimes. You know, I've had people wishing me dead from cancer. 
Um, I've had people hope that I died very painfully from cancer, like my father. I've had people threaten me. I've had people threaten to, be, to attack me just because they haven't got a ticket. I've had people threaten, tell me that they're going to they're going to kick the shit out of my wife. Um, and I don't mince my words there. Um, I've had people say that, you know, they're going to knock seven barrels out of my wife just because they haven't got a ticket for the RCM. They're going to get the RCM shut down. We've had people send anonymous emails to local councils trying to get the RCM shut down. I've had an anonymous letter sent to my boss trying to get me the sack from my job because of the RCM. And I know who sent it. I won't name them, but I know who sent it. Um, John knows who sent it. I've had to deal with really nasty, evil, sick stuff that I won't even begin to say on here um, because it's not worth it. You know, um, some stuff that would make your blood boil it real hardcore you know it, it, there's a line and then there's like 57 million miles over the line and and that is is you know well john can touch on it a bit more it? yeah i think what uh, the, the, the problem is and i see this obviously when when um uh when somebody has a dig um and they you know and they feel justified in perhaps you know keep um given a retort that is you know pretty much outrageous um it, it's what they what they aren't considering is is how it affects how it affects our group and how it affects people and how it affects gary and lisa and other people within the group i mean it's i, I don't you know i don't see it much because but i'm not on facebook as much and you know gary is what i sort of like more like our 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 um you know um promotional side of it and this is what i say to them you you know you run the show and we back you up and we 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 do back him up i mean um we we have made decisions this year to um to earn steps to um to do things to to make sure that things don't don't go out of hand this year at the rally um uh you know i'll say no more than that um the one thing that um you know uh, it, it's it's shameful that people do this um and I know people turn around and say, you know, chin up, give us their names and we'll go sort them out and everything else. That's, that's not what it's about. You know, Gary has to put this, you know, in a box and try and move on from it. And it is very difficult because we, this isn't our jobs. This isn't, um, this isn't a career. This isn't something we do, you know, work for a charity. We do this in our spare time. We, he has a full-time job. So do I, so do virtually every single one of our masters apart from the retired people. And we spend... Um, I, you, you wouldn't, I wouldn't like to count the hours we spend on it. Weeks, weeks of our time, you know, doing, arranging stuff, sorting stuff out, conversations with people, trying to look at, look at, um, you know, um, making it bigger and better every year. We're always trying to look at new stuff. We're obviously, we go to sites, we arrange meetings with farmers. We, we, we don't just do, you know, oh well, we'll go and have, hold a rally there, and we'll go and see, a, go and see a farmer or a state. We. Gary's always um, one of these people that wants it to be as good as we can get it. And, you know, and, and he drives that very much in the fact that, um, you know, he's always trying to do the best um, because it's his father's name at the top. And we all follow that. And we all, we all you know, uh, we all take um, our sort of efforts as very seriously in this. And one of the things that is quite, quite, um, Difficult is is when we get a lot of these things and Gary gets a lot of these things aimed at him because he gets it, not the rest of us. I mean, I um, I will I brush it off a lot more than what a lot of people would because that it and I you know I, I make the statement is if you don't like me then hard luck you know because I'm, I'm not forcing you to like me. Um, it's it you know we do what we want to do because of the reasons we want to do it and so do the rest of our group, but. What I, I find very difficult to accept is is when this isn't this isn't our job. We don't get paid to do it. We don't put ourselves out to to have this put forward at us. And when we have problems and we have people um, in trying to impose their will because they think they're hard done by, I think it's um, it's quite sad. I know uh, there. Are, don't get me wrong. There are thousands of people out there 
that you know understand it and everything else and you can you look at all the other groups i've seen chats on some of the other ones where people moan um at, at the dig organizers or oh, why didn't know this why didn't know that well if you want to do it better go out there and do it yourself and then you'll find out how many people will moan about stuff whether it be little trivial things or big things like gary said about you know i mean look our rally successful we know it's successful we're not bigging ourselves up in any way but the one of the problems is is we can't have five thousand people turn up to a, a thousand acre rally it's just not done you know we want to we if we could run a five thousand people event we would do it but that we we would have to give up our jobs to do it we could not coordinate we could not physically do it we wouldn't have the land available you know we want everybody to come we want everybody to have a good time that's what it's all about it's about them having a good time we could we could put the price up each year we don't do stuff like that you know we're very firm on you know we want to make it affordable for people we want to people to have a good time and we want them to know that when they go away um they know that every single penny that we have we have raised apart from the costs of running it which is the marquees the toilets and everything else that we provide for them as a service every single penny of that goes towards charity no none of our marshals get paid anything you know it's it's and it, it hurts when people actually turn around and actually say well you know uh, and and they they make accusations and they and they make false claims and it is false claims and it is it's sad really and i don't i don't mean that just as from a, from the rsm point of view i think it's for all rally organizers you know, I, you know, I see when we go to other rallies, you know, how much effort they put in. I realise how much effort they put in just for a, a weekend. And it's very, it's, it's tough. It is hard. Well, and, well, yeah. well said, John. And I think um, we should just, those yeah, sort of people. Yeah. And uh, Gary, Gary, I know you're heavily on Facebook. You just got to look at them and go, go away. Just flick them off. Because they're, like, they're like shit, shit on your shoe. You, you <laughs> yeah. just get a big stick, pick them off, chuck it in the ditch, and carry on. Exactly. Um, it, and, it, and it's hard. I, I get I get emails. I don't even forward them to you. I get no. emails for the Rodney Cook ticket saying certain things and stuff. I just, yeah, whatever, mate. Just every, move on. Every rule, every, every decision we make, uh, whether it be, you know, whether you're allowed to, to you know, whether there's dogs on site, whether you're allowed with fire, whatever it is, every decision we make is always done for the benefit of the people. I mean, we've had a discussion this year about um, last year we had the ambulance on site. It was used a little bit, um, and, but it, it's coming back every year. It, luckily, it's, it's sort of half donated and it doesn't really cost an awful lot compared to if you actually had to pay for a full-time paramedic yeah. and ambulance to be on site. It's, most of it is donated. But it is reassurance because we, we feel very responsible for a 1,000-plus people. And God forbid anything was to happen. Um, with it there, we have peace of mind because it's very it, – for us, the stress of having some first aiders in our group that would then be responsible – if somebody was to have a cardiac cardiac arrest in the film be and then not being able to cope and not being able to get the of the film, all those sorts of things we go through mm -hmm. all of that security is there as peace of mind so that everybody is safe um that's why we we have we're having you know the full blown yeah um it was such last year I mean, I so many people come up to me saying it was so reassuring knowing that there was a an on-site and um, fully equipped ambulance 24 hours on site the whole time and i know dave dave didn't went there and i don't yeah growing toenail yeah. and i don't know what it was but um it, it's it was so, growing pubic hair up oh, that's what it was, <laughs> yeah. but it was so reassuring knowing that we've got a team of paramedics in it there two of them are metal detectorists um and then there was a full-blown paramedic I'm, I mean, the, the, the ambulance, you know. I mean, it's really good because if someone, let's say something stupid happened, like someone wanted to shave their privates with a broken bottle and it went wrong, uh, yeah. there's a paramedic there, isn't there? There's Nikki a paramedic Potter. to deal with it. Um, Carl Ellis. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Anyway. But, but no. We, but like we're, said, Gary, we're John, have you got show. any last bits? Because it's like 
way past half um, past nine. <laughs> watch, this, watch this space for the um, for the no frills. Um, we've had the go ahead from the farmer. Adrian will get it all up on the website once we know. Um, it's going to be as we, as we said earlier. It's, we're looking at probably the last weekend in September, so Friday the twenty seventh. October, and then the first weekend in October, possibly Adrian. <laughs> um, and um, as a one day in imminent going to be you know as soon as we've sorted it out and um obviously keep an eye out for the competitions um to win rcm tickets um how many have we got on the waiting list now ed it's quite a few isn't it? Uh, about 350 plus <laughs> so. and not many though. um uh. no but just still if you want to you, you never know 100 people got, might have COVID lot, or something but we got a lot um, planned. Yeah. you know we're yeah. gonna have the big screen we're gonna have the the medieval reenactment we've got the tea we've got the comedy store coming back on the friday we've got bottle lunch, shaving bottle shaving yeah we've got bottle shaving booth um <laughs> we... <laughs> Gary, thank you very much and john tonight top guys really we really have... good we want to thank all of you. Yeah. The whole reason we came here really was to thank everyone who's ever helped us. And hand on heart, we cannot thank you enough to help us achieve what we, you know, to, to like we said, that that hospital and everything on, in it. Go on the website and look at the um, picture. Uh, well, if people go on our on the Rodney Cook website and look at the RUH, it's. Um, it's a fantastic new year. And, and that is what we want to thank you all for. Yeah. All of you guys who just come to the rally, support us every year, buy tickets, whatever. It's an amazing achievement what we've done. And the metal detecting hobby in a whole is an amazing thing. And we've shown that if we come together as a group, we're not a bunch of treasure hunters. We're not a bunch of idiots just wandering around in a field in the rain. We're actually a really nice bunch of people <laughs> <laughs> who, who, um, who can achieve something incredible and we have we've achieved something absolutely incredible and what we've achieved is is still ongoing and long may it continue for as long as we can hold our nerves yeah, and, that's it. And, and 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 you know we've just shown the world that our hobby isn't about treasure hunting it's we, we're actually a decent bunch of people who care about other people and that's exactly what the rcm is we've always said it's a family the rcm is a family and that is what we always say you come in and you join the rcm family you're part of it exactly <laughs> and you're part of a family and we look after our own families look out for each other and they support each other and that's exactly what you get with the rcm is that well done mate well gary Thank you very much, John. Thank you much. Uh, thank you much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you as well for uh, the donation that you'll be making to the uh, the yeah. walk this weekend. Yes. Tell me how we do it, and then we'll 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 give you 50, 50 quid for for your for, for your five part. For appreciate that. That's it's basically twenty it's miles. PayPal. Twenty miles, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, He's Marathon. walking around Marathon. the world. <laughs> So basically, for those of you who haven't read the bottom of the screen, if you do want to make a donation, and I say, as I said before, thank you to Seb Regden and to uh, oh, his name's gone blank, John Nicholson from Coin Pod. Thank you both for their donations this evening. If you would like to drop uh, even a small pound over, uh, please feel free to uh, send it over to myself at saddler underscore Dave at yahoo.co.uk. Uh, my union leads will be watching this so they'll be knowing that there'll be some monies coming their way anyway so it will be all above board don't be worrying about any malarkey uh adrian thank you as ever gary and john everybody watching thank you, thank you very much. Uh, we'll see you soon i don't think i've organized a guest for next week as yet uh bear with and we will sort uh, no problem I think it's your turn to sort one actually, Adrian. Yeah, I'll find one. Yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll sort one out then. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Take care, Good night. Good night. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs>
just got to show you Gary's pants. Gary's pants. <laughs> he's put the thing, he's up top now, and he's got yeah, the laptop pants on. Propped up. And his widgie. Good night, everyone. <gasps> I don't want to see it.